In this video, we're going to be talking about Polycam. Polycam is an iOS app that allows you to create 3D models from an object from photos. So in this video, we're going to be taking this dog, taking some pictures of it, and then generating a 3D model. You ready? Let's dive in. Polycam was originally created as a LiDAR scanning app, but since expanded to include a photogrammetry mode that they call photo mode that's compatible with most modern iPhones. So before we talk about Polycam, let's take a step back and ask ourselves, is Polycam a good fit for me? So take a look at the statements on the left and the statements on the right. If you're somebody who's looking for sub-millimeter precision and advanced mesh editing capabilities and you want it to be free, Polycam's probably not going to be a great fit. However, if you want a simple and easy to use app on your phone that doesn't require any mesh editing and can produce watertight meshes with a color texture and you're comfortable paying under $10 a month for 100 scans, then Polycam is probably going to be a good fit for you. If you're interested in an app that gives you more control over the scanning process, you can check out some of my videos on Metashape in the description below. It's a more powerful program, but it's more expensive and it has a much steeper learning curve. So let's get started with Polycam. You don't really need a whole lot of equipment to use Polycam. Here, I'm going to be using a turntable just to make it a little bit easier to move the model around, and I'm also going to be using a tripod that I can mount my phone to. This is just so the phone doesn't shake or jitter when I take a picture, and to keep the images nice and steady. I'm using an iPhone 13 Pro Max, but pretty much any iPhone will work with this app whether or not it has LiDAR. With our model on the turntable and our phone on the tripod, we can start to get things set up for our scan. One of the first things that I like to do is to put the model onto the turntable and rotate it a couple of times so I can see through the phone whether or not the object will stay in frame during the entire rotation. If you see one part of the object sticks off camera a little bit, go ahead, move it, and try again. So with everything lined up perfectly, we can start taking some pictures. I use a pretty steady process. I just take a picture, turn a little bit, take another picture, turn a little bit more, and I try to keep everything as steady as possible. Once I've made a full revolution around the model, I'm going to go ahead and place it on its side. This lets me capture some of the detail under the legs, under the chin, and kind of around the spots that are a little bit harder to see dead on. Once I've captured this full side, I'm going to flip the model over and repeat the process again. This just lets us get the maximum coverage possible, and really, the more photos you have, the better the mesh is going to look, and the better the texture is going to look too. You'll notice there's a pretty harsh standing shadow here. I did my best with the lighting, but it's something I'm not particularly good at, so the less shadows you can have, obviously the better your scan is going to come out. So from here, we can go ahead and upload the files, and before we do anything else, one of the things that I like to do is scroll through all the photos that I took and just quickly make sure there aren't any blurry photos or any photos that are out of focus that might cause the algorithm to skip a beat. Anything that looks like it's going to be a problem, we're just going to go ahead and delete. This all looks great to me, so at this point I feel pretty confident that all these photos look good, so now we're able to move to the next step, which is processing them. We've got a couple of options for processing the model, but the most important one for us is to make sure we select Use Object Masking. This will cut the model out from the background and from the turntable, and just makes it easier to process. For the level of detail, we have a few options. We have Reduced, Medium, and Full. Basically, all that we're doing here is determining what is the size of the texture, how much detail is this texture going to have, what is this model going to look like. So for this scan, we're just going to go ahead and select Medium and click Go. And that's it! About two minutes later, our 3D model is completely finished and ready for us to inspect. The texture looks pretty good. You can see there's a couple areas here on the mesh where it had a hard time with the spikes, and it kind of stitched them all together into one big spike. It's not the end of the world. The mesh itself looks pretty good, and the texture looks fantastic. You can even see some of this writing on the belly of the dog. So it's pretty impressive stuff, considering this took only a couple of minutes to make. You pretty much watched it happen in real time. So from here, the last step of our process is to upload and share our model. I'm going to upload and share it to Sketchfab. I'm a big fan of Sketchfab. It's an easy way to upload models and share them, especially because it has an in-browser viewer. From the Sketchfab web interface, we can also take a look at the mesh of the model. So we can see here the texture has been applied, so we're looking at the model in full color. But we can also pull that texture away and just look at the raw mesh underneath. 
So if we were planning to use this model for 3D printing, this would be the mesh that we'd be printing. So it does have some minor issues, but generally speaking, considering it took under five minutes to make, I would say this is definitely a success. We can also take a look at the wireframe of the mesh and see that it's pretty clean. It doesn't really have any high concentration or excess density. So overall, Polycam is a great app and I think it's a great way to carry a scanner around in your pocket and use it to scan things out in the wild. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know if this is an app that you've used before or if there's an alternative that you prefer. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.